Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, people. It's been a while since we've been in this part of the East Riding before. The last time we were, we were in Lockington. And you might remember at the beginning of that episode, I started at the River Hull. Well, we're doing the same thing here today. That's not the River Hull, though. That's one of the drains that runs down the side of it. This is pretty much as far eastwards as you can go in this place. And you have to take a very weird detour to get to this first village, Aram, because in the way, there's a big, big area controlled by the MOD. Welcome to Leckenfield. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Leckenfield, Boggy Stream. Today in the East Riding, we come to a place that's had more than its fair share of military activity over the years, and it still does today. Welcome to Leckenfield, partway between Driffield and Beverley, just off the A164. There are three villages within its parish boundaries, Leckenfield being the main one, but this episode will also cover the tiny duo of Aram and Scorborough, both of which have interesting bits and bobs. There can be no denying the landmark that puts the rest in the shade out here. South of the main village is the former RAF Leckenfield, which today is occupied by the Defence School of Transport, one of the institutions that make up the Defence College of Logistics, Policing and Administration, or DCLPA for short. The buildings of the former airfield can clearly be seen from various places within the village, a constant reminder of the days when bomber aircraft were penetrating German airspace. In fact, Leckenfield was the first to do that during World War II. Elsewhere in the village, there's a few other run-of-the-mill things, like a church, a village hall, and a playing field. There was a shop until recently, but it's now closed down. In a field close to it all are the remains of a castle, the mound of which can still be seen. Let's get stuck in and see what Leckenfield is all about. We start with a drive through Aram from the banks of a drain alongside the River Hull. That farm where we started is quite a notable one. Located right at the end of the public road, it goes by the name of Dumble Farm and you can book yourself a tour of it. It offers an all-encompassing experience into the world of conservation and sustainable farming. They have a herd of Highland cows and offer guests a chance to get up close to them on something they call their Highland Cow Safari. It sounds like a great day out to me. Their website is linked below. Now, as you can probably tell, Aram doesn't have a lot more than that. Anglers might know the place well because there's a fishing venue on the bank of the river. Otherwise, it's essentially just a collection of houses between the River Hull and Leckenfield, with a red phone box thrown in for good measure. However, at its western end, there's also something else that you maybe wouldn't expect to see in a village this small. It's a railway station. Let's see if we can see a train. 
Now perhaps what's sort of unusual about a village this small is the fact that it's got a railway station. There you can see Aram Station. So I've just hopped out the car for a second so that we can take a look at this in a bit more detail. Located on the Yorkshire coastline between Hull and Scarborough, Aram Railway Station is one of the smallest in the country. It has a limited service compared with others on the route due to the rural nature of the area it serves. The station is unstaffed and most of its original buildings have now been demolished. The station house is privately owned. Its claim to fame comes in the form of a song lyric. It's mentioned in the song Slow Train by the comedy duo Flanders and Swan. It was written about the demise of many stations across the UK following the beaching cuts in the 1960s. Now to get to Leckenfield from here you have to use this road. It's a continuous curve which arcs around the northern edge of a former airfield. Decades ago, to get between the two villages, the road continued straight from the railway station and onto Grange Road. However, the airfield was extended in the 1970s in order for its runways to be lengthened. In turn, that meant Vulcan bombers could use it. So can we see this airfield? Of course we can, if you know where to go that is. So of course years ago you could drive straight through this area that I'm showing you now but of course you have to go round these days thanks to the extension to this behind me. That is the old RAF Leckenfield which is still used today by the military. We can't obviously go in because if I took one step on the other side of that fence they'd probably lynch me. Here's a bit more about the base in pictorial form. RAF Leckenfield was used by Bomber Command during World War II. Although no longer used by the RAF, it is still active today though. It's used by the MOD's Defence School of Transport. Leckenfield opened in early December 1936. Number 166 Squadron were the first to occupy the base. On the night of the 3rd of September 1939, the first night of the war, 10 Whitley bombers from Leckenfield became the first British aircraft to penetrate German airspace, dropping propaganda leaflets over Germany. In October that same year, it was taken over by RAF Fighter Command and the Mark I Spitfires of No. 72 Squadron arrived from Church Fenton. During the Battle of Britain, Leckenfield was temporarily used by many other squadrons of Fighter Command, which made short stays here to rest and regroup. There was also a decoy airfield at nearby Routh. In the 1950s, Leckenfield was nominated as a dispersal base for the RAF's V Bomber Force and became the base of the Central Gunnery School, which, among other functions, trained air gunnery instructors in Wellington bombers and pilot attack instructors in Spitfire and Mosquito aircraft. This school was later transformed into the Fighter Weapons School. Venoms, Meteors, Vampires and Hawker Hunters were all flown from here during that time. In 1959, Number 19 Squadron joined with their Hawker Hunter F6s before being re-equipped with the English Electric Lightning in 1962. They would later move to RAF Gutersloh. Number 92 Squadron, who had also been stationed at Leckenfield, would join them in 1968. Many people knew them by their nickname, the Blue Diamonds. Here you can see them flying over Beverly Minster. In the 1970s, the control tower at Leckenfield developed a reputation for being haunted by a flight lieutenant who had been killed, along with an airman passenger, when the aircraft he was piloting crashed when coming into land in 1956. Earlier this year, a former commanding officer at Leckenfield, Captain John Paddy Hemingway, died at the age of 105. He was recognised as the last surviving RAF fighter pilot of the Battle of Britain. Flying did still take place here until recently. Two Sea King helicopters of E-Flight 202 Squadron were based here in a search and rescue role. However, this changed as a private company took over the services and the aircraft were retired in 2015. Now, of course, the RAF have little involvement here. Today, the Defence School of Transport is based here instead. A tri-service establishment which forms part of the DCLPA, DST Leckenfield is Europe's largest driver training establishment and its accommodation is designated as Normandy Barracks. The DST provides 150 different courses on transport matters for nearly 20,000 trainees a year, with the ability to train up to 1,500 at any one time. It has a fleet of approximately 1,300 vehicles, ranging from cars, vans and trucks, to mechanical handling equipment and specialised military vehicles. The school has 16 kilometres of road training circuits, which include roundabouts, traffic lights, junctions, a manoeuvring area with parking bays, and a purpose-built 1 in 8 sloped hill. Training also takes place on local public roads.
there are also some 26 kilometers of cross-country training routes featuring 40 artificial obstacles, two water crossings, a lake, and various pools. Parts of the training areas reflect conditions which would be encountered on deployment in locations such as the Middle East. 166,000 trees were planted to create five woodlands which are used for training in concealment and camouflage. So now we know a bit more about the base and its past and current uses. As you can appreciate, filming anything around an active military base is pretty dubious. That said, this is a public road and therefore perfectly legal. As mentioned earlier, at one time this was the main route from Aram into Leckenfield. Let's follow it into the village and get to our main walk now. It has to be said that aside from some of the housing, you'd likely never know that this village was even next to a military base. We begin our main walk on a street called the Poplars, one of the newer areas of Leckenfield, north and west of the historic village core. At the end of this dead-end road, you can walk through the Millennium Green. A small patch of land set aside to mark the turn of the 21st century, this is a lovely peaceful spot with a few benches and trees. It also has a sundial too, which was showing the right time incidentally. The green is a sign of things to come. Leckenfield's residents are very proud of their village and strive to maintain it as best they can. Nothing out of the ordinary, really, for anywhere in East Yorkshire. Here's the church dedicated to St Catherine. This one had strong links to the former RAF base. This fact is reflected both inside and out, with both Polish war graves and a dedicated chapel. The church is a patchwork of styles and building materials, reflecting a history of change and restoration. Limestone ashlar, chalk rubble and brick are all on display here. The bulk of the church is 13th century and early English Gothic in style. The oldest part of the building is the western wall of the South Isle, believed to be pre-conquest and indicative of the earliest building on this site. Along Aram Road now as we pass a few big and much older properties than the ones on the Poplars. We're heading for a primary school next. Leckenfield Primary is like most others, but being so close to Normandy Barracks means things are a little different here. The school has strong links with DST Leckenfield and its senior leadership team includes teachers with experience of teaching children from the forces community. The school works with DST personnel on events such as remembrance services. One of the school's governors is also a serving member of the armed forces. Between the school and the former RAF base are several streets that look like these on Shipton Crescent. We're very familiar with this type of housing by now. These are classic examples of RAF married quarters. Once tied to the airfield, they're now in private ownership. Once through those, the gates of Normandy Barracks greet us on Grange Road. Since 1996, the DST has been training personnel in the British Army, Royal Air Force and Royal Marines right here. As well as Leckenfield, the DST has 11 other satellite facilities, 10 in the south of England and one in the north at Catterick. The good thing about the Ministry of Defence in this country is there's always a clear boundary between what's civilian and what isn't. You can definitely tell that you're not allowed in there. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to stay on the public road. Turn the camera around here so I'll show you where I am. We're going to head down towards the main road that goes through Leckenfield from north to south and then we're going to turn right at the end of this we're going to head next towards something that's got a different bit of history something that's very ancient the large fence marking the boundary continues alongside the road it's very clear which parts of Leckenfield are off limits to the public with nothing else to capture through the fence we'll now turn our attention to the A164 one of the busiest roads in East Yorkshire this connects Beverley with Driffield Leckenfield used to have a shop and a post office along here, but as you can see it's now closed down. It has been since 2022. Now with no facilities, Leckenfielders must travel to Molescroft for the nearest shop. Partway up this road is a house called Manor View, and that's an apt name. Let's follow this path. For a while you think it leads to nowhere, but it heads for the site of Leckenfield Castle. Now a mound surrounded by a moat, Leckenfield Castle was the home of the Percy family, the Dukes of Northumberland. Among those born at the castle was William Percy in 1428, who went on to be the Bishop of Carlisle. 
In the 16th century, John Leyland described Leconfield Castle as a large house enclosed by a moat and an attractive park. Three quarters of the house was built of timber, the rest of brick and stone. Today, there are still extensive Tudor brick remains on the mound. Well, as castle mounds go, it's certainly not the easiest one to see and probably not the easiest one to access either. So uh, I've saved you a job, people. If you wanted to see the castle mound at Leckenfield, I've done it for you, haven't I? Now, of course, we can carry on on this footpath. It will run off into the countryside, but that doesn't really help me. I need to go back into the village. So we're going to retrace our steps down this path that we've just come down uh, and we're going to head into a housing estate which is to the north of this area and that'll really finish Leckenfield off. There isn't much more to it I'm afraid, it's just generally speaking uh, all housing from this point. There is another little village though which we will, we will cover after we've done that and that's Scorborough and that'll nicely round off this entire episode. We return to the road where a few properties make reference to the castle. These include Castle Farm, not too far from the end of the footpath. Let's hop over the road at this point towards this building, an electrician's workshop run by Arthur Day. On the wall here is a parish notice board, so let's get Leckenfield marked off. We are down to just four left in the East Riding of Yorkshire. The remainder of Main Street is all housing. There used to be two pubs in this village, but both have long since closed. They were the Roebuck and the Bay Horse. Let's check out the final housing estate now by way of a short montage. There's one last area to cover before we leave Leckenfield behind, and that's the playing field off Miles Lane. This has a playground, a football pitch, and a bowling green. The playing fields act as the central meeting point for many groups and organisations, including the parish council, whose meetings take place in the Leckenfield Recreation Club. Effectively now the only pub in the village, this often has live entertainment, quiz nights, and even bingo. It is though a members only club, and it costs £6 a year to join. Mind you, it's worth doing so because it allows access to the cheap bar prices. Our last stop is the small village of Scorborough, about a mile to the north of Leckenfield. There's no way anyone can miss its church. This is St Leonard's, whose tall spire punches a big hole in the East Yorkshire skies. Deservedly so, this is a Grade 1 listed building. It's considered a notable example of Victorian church architecture and was constructed between 1857 and 59. The architect was a man we know well, John Loughborough Pearson. It was built for James Hill, a local landowner and tenant of the third Baron Hotham. It replaced a former brick building which stood here previously. As for the rest of Scorborough, it's small but picturesquely seated in the valley of the Ake Beck, amidst a profusion of trees. In the early part of the Saxon period, this place belonged to Earl Addy, who erected a chapel here that later became the parish church. Scorborough was later colonised by a Norseman and then came into the possession of the Hothams, who erected another castle. Traces of its moat are still visible. The Hothams were seated here for several centuries, and during the Civil War, Sir John, the Governor of Hull, garrisoned his mansion at Scorborough for the Parliamentarians. He was eventually captured, tried and executed. His home was ravaged by the Roundheads and subsequently destroyed. Near that site today is a modern mansion with 34 acres of land, Scorborough Hall. For many years, it was the residence of James Hall, master of the Holderness Foxhounds. And that's going to do us for the parish of Leckenfield. We have but a tiny handful left now, and our journey through East Yorkshire is coming to a close. Join me next time in a village that's named after a quaking bog.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.